All right, guys, we have another top five list today. And today we're gonna to be talking about the top five things that you need to be focusing on the snatch, especially when you are starting this sport. When you're super advanced, you probably already covered this, but it's good to still watch it and refresh yourself anyways. But if you're new and you focus on these five things, chances are your technique is gonna progress well. And if you ignore these things, really bad stuff's gonna happen and you're not gonna know what's going on with your snatch and why it sucks so bad. So if you do these things, you're gonna be much, much better off. All right, so the first thing, and this is probably the most important thing, the thing that's gonna dictate what happens throughout the snatch is your foot pressure. The foot pressure throughout the whole pool, it's a good idea to think about it staying flat through the feet the whole time. And if that doesn't make any sense to you, keep it in the center of the foot the whole time. Not way back on the heels, not on the toes, because when we go to pull on a barbell, if we have even foot pressure, we're using the legs no matter what. If our foot pressure is way back here on the heels, we're gonna get out of balance and trying to extend from here is gonna send the bar in every different direction possible. Same thing with the toes. If we're off the floor on the toes, we're gonna hang out out front the whole entire time. So one thing you can do to make sure the barbell is centered every single time you snatch is just feel that foot pressure flat in the foot. Then we're gonna use our legs and keep that barbell nice and centered the whole time. The second thing, and keep in mind, these are in no particular order. These are just five things. Is finishing your pull. So when you go to snatch, the main thing I see is we pull and then we start getting tense in those arms and we never extend the hips and we just try to jump underneath from there. Make sure you keep those arms loose and you use your legs to open those hips all the way and extend. That's one thing you have to do on every single snatch that every single weightlifter does. And if you don't do it, you are missing out on a lot of kilos. All right, number three is making contact in the hip. For those of you that have really, really long arms, this isn't something you should focus on too much, but making contact in those hips is important because when we extend, if I were to jump, the one thing that's driving more than anything else and moving more than anything else is the hips. If we make contact off the thigh, like here, and I extend, that bar is not really going anywhere, but if that bar is seated in the hip and we extend from here, I can really send that bar high. So make sure you're patient. You let that bar get all the way into the hip. And then when we feel that contact in the hip, we extend. This is one of my favorite cues that I don't see a lot of coaches teach because not all weightlifters do this, but I've noticed the most consistent ones do. And you can watch Lasha snatch in slow motion. You can watch the best snatchers in slow motion. They will do this. And it's making sure that the heels stay down until contact is made, then the extension happens. This keeps you patient. This keeps you sitting into those legs until you make that contact, allowing you to use the quads and put power into the bar. If we get under the toes early, like here, look how much less powerful this position looks. If I were to extend the shoulders, come back, and everything goes wrong. But if we stay patient, we let that contact happen with flat feet, then I can put all the power I want into that bar because I'm using my legs, my hamstrings, my glutes. And if we're not on a flat foot, we can't do that. All right, we're good. Uh, I'm out of breath now, hold on. Yeah. The last thing is moving your feet in transition. So this is not moving your feet and this is moving your feet. And the reason that that is so important, and I know not every weightlifter does it, but moving your feet gives you an audible sense of timing. If you're able to move those feet and hear your lifts, you're gonna be able to build consistency, and it's a lot easier to manipulate technique when you have a sense of timing like that. If you're just staying on your feet the whole time, stuff could be going wrong and you would have no idea. So get moving those feet, just pick them up, replant them, think of hitting your feet, right when your elbows lock out. And that's gonna give you a much better sense of timing which you can build consistency on. So starting September 1st, I am taking 10 total clients and we're gonna do three months of weightlifting. I'm taking 10 people and that's it. I'm putting the form on the Dozer Weightlifting website. You can click the link in the bio and what it's gonna be is remote coaching 10 of you for three months and I'm stepping back in that arena just for three months um, because I do miss coaching. I do miss making people better at weightlifting and 
The one thing I've realized is seeing people on the dog pack, seeing Ryan's athletes do well, I get more enjoyment out of other people's PRs than I get out of my own at this point. And I wanna help people. I want you to get good at weightlifting. So if you want to be coached by me from September 1st to December 1st, the form is in the description. Fill it out, enter it. And if you're approved, I'll be calling you sometime before September 1st. And we are going to get started 12 full weeks of training, three training cycles. And I guarantee you, if you sign up, you're gonna learn a shitload about weightlifting. You're gonna have this kind of information pouring into your brain every single day that you train, and you're gonna hit some PRs. So if that's something you're interested in, fill out that form, and we will be announcing who is accepted a couple days before September 1st. But we'll keep you updated on that. If you're interested, fill that out, and let's get to work. Those five things are crucial. If you do those five things, you're gonna be pretty good at snatching, regardless of what else is going on. So if you're going into the gym, I would copy this list, type it in your notes, do something, and focus on one or two of those things every training session. Do not focus on all five of them because it's gonna get your head spinning and whatever happens is not gonna be good. You're gonna be overthinking. So one or two of those things, really drill those when you go to do your snatches. And if you do that for a month, two months, you're gonna be much better off. These principles really, really will make sure that your snatch is kept care of, if that makes sense. You're not going to go too far off the rails if you're doing these things. If you focus on the really specific shit, like wrist angle and torso angle at contact and all this stuff, then it starts to get a little confusing because seeing those things, these really specific things, and then trying to apply them while you're lifting is really hard to do, but these basic concepts are very easy to apply to your lifting because they're basic and there's no, there's no tight guidelines. It's just like you either do this thing or you don't. You either move your feet or you don't. You either keep your feet flat until you make contact or you don't. And if you can just do these things, it's going to pay off big time for your lifts. So I think we're gonna do another one of these for clean and jerk in the next video, or we might do clean and then jerk, we'll see. But let me know which one of these works for you guys the best. Because these are the main ones I give to my athletes, especially when they're newer. And from what I've seen, these make things click more than any cues I've given out. You can always give the use your legs cue and all that, but it doesn't always add up. These are the ones that add up, the ones that make sense. So try to apply these to your training. It's gonna help. Let me know which one helps the most. And if you're newer to weightlifting, come back to this video when you start getting frustrated and just watch the demonstrations, watch everything happen, because this is going to help you. I wish I had this stuff when I was coming into weightlifting, so you have it. It's right here. So come back to it, use it as a resource, and get better at the snatch, because the snatch is fucking hard. I'm pretty articulate this morning. I feel pretty dialed in, and that's because I took two scoops of the high stem gorilla mode. Um, I've replaced coffee with that, I've replaced water with that, I've replaced my food with that. That's all I, my diet is just, two scoops for breakfast, two scoops for lunch, two scoops for dinner, and that's all I do. And I feel better than I ever have. I'm losing weight, I feel great. So if you guys wanna get on the Dozer diet and just eat pre-workout and nothing else, use discount code Dozer for 10% off and comment Dozer diet. This is if, you're, tire, please don't listen if you're a dog. Gonna kill someone, dude. I mean, now nah, if they're a dog, they'll survive. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Gorilla Mine, best supplements in the game. Discount code Dozer for 10% off. And Barbell Apparel, they're giving away a free sweater right now. And the sweater they're giving away is like $100. And all you have to do to get that is spend $100 on the store and you'll get it included in your package for free. And you're essentially getting 50% off your order at that point. And you're never ever gonna see, see that deal. You're never ever gonna see that deal anywhere ever. So you should take advantage of it now. The link is in the bio. Use my link. Help me out. This company is awesome. I want to make sure they know that they're awesome. And if you guys go support them using my link, that's the best way to let them know. So go do that for me. And if you want a cold plunge, we're having the hottest fucking year in Texas that's ever existed. It's supposed to be like 110 degrees without heat index next Friday. And the one thing that has saved me is the cold plunge. There is nothing like sweating all day and just you can be in your house and you're gonna sweat. My whole house is warping because of how hot it is. And so is my body, but I can jump in the cold plunge 
and it's like it never happened. So if you guys want to have that advantage, you can go to subzeroplunge.com, use discount code Dozer and get $250 off. You can do a payment plan, whatever. The payment plan, you're going to be paying less what you would normally pay to go to a sauna ice bath place anyway, but you have the advantage of doing that in your own backyard minus the sauna, but it's summer, so you can just hang out outside in between ice baths. So do that. Thank you guys for the support, and I will see you next week.